Hi, my beautiful Aries. Welcome back to Queen Cup Tarot. I am just shuffling up right now, smudging what, whatnot, getting ready to do your January 2020 readings. Um, for those that are new, welcome. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe. It's much appreciated. And for those that are returning, thank you for all your likes, shares, subscribes, positively engaging this channel the way you do, building it up to over 80,000 subscribers. I think we're at 90,000 now. And, you know, just doing this thing called Ascension with me all 2019 and now going into 2020. It's a privilege and honor, guys, seriously. All right, I love you. Happy New Year. For those that timestamp this reading prior to the prayer, thank you. Please continue to do so for folks. If you are new and want to bypass the intro, just see below in the comments. Angel Gang's great about timestamping the reading for you prior to the prayer, which is when we acknowledge this reading starts. Um, for those that would like to book personal readings with me, I'll continue to offer them in 2020. As you know, my passion is to work with you guys on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So if you do want to book a personal reading with me, just know the format is very similar to what you see here on YouTube. Obviously, it's just specific to you. Um, but I do do these readings um, live either via Skype, WhatsApp, or regular phone. So you can record the session, but I will not pre-record it and send it to you, okay? So just keep that in mind. And um, for those that want additional content, then the uh, monthly videos I do on YouTube, I did launch a uh, but I don't even know how to say it. I did launch launch a Patreon. <laughs> so that's my little baby, guys. You know, it's a small platform there, but I offer daily and weekly readings. It's for members only, high vibes only. You come in there with low vibrational energy, judgment, anything, not just to me, to anyone on there. I will give you a hot block and a refund. Okay, so it's it's gonna be a safe space, so help me God, <laughs> okay? Where YouTube isn't necessarily a safe space to talk about the energies people are dealing with personally. I know people don't feel safe to run their mouth in the comments where some people do. On the, on the Patreon, you're safe. You can talk about whatever you want. Because a lot of people, if they don't resonate with the readings, will talk about with the energies they are dealing with and their own downloads, and they need to feel safe to be able to do that. So I am gatekeeping the shit out of it, but Listen, guys, join if you really feel like you resonate with not just my readings, but with me as a person. All right. All right. Um, we're going to be using Cynthia Harrison's Honest Truth Tarot like we've used for all of the monthlies this month. Um, and But I'm going to start the reading off with the Tarot of Chateau Avenarese. It's just the Major Arcana. So I will pull one of those and then we'll break down that Major Arcana energy with a nine card spread from the Honest Truth Tarot. Then I will use the Golden Lenormand as well as the um, Fairy Godmother Oracle to clarify. And then we will wrap with um, an Archetypes Oracle by Kim Krantz. Yeah, we'll get it all done in 40 minutes. They've been I've been able to get them all in 40 minutes. All right. But you guys can timestamp now. We're going to go into prayer, okay? Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, guardian angels, thank you for rising me up out of my bed this morning and thank you for connecting me with the collective every day. Right now in particular, please allow me to communicate clearly to the sign of Aries. Please allow me to communicate to them the messages that are in their greatest good, surrounding the material abundance, sustenance, the relationships closest to them, their personal, their personal ascension and development, and any other messages that you deem worthy at this time. Thank you, Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, guardian angels, for everything you do for me in the collective, all the healing energy, the support, the love, the guidance, and the protection. We are nothing without this, and we are nothing without you. So glory be to the Most High forever and ever. Amen. All right, Aries, let's see what your overall energy going into 2020 is. Guys, with these monthlies, Honestly, I would watch the videos that the titles resonate for you. If the title resonates, there's a good chance the video will. Most people are going to be watching Capricorn and Aquarius videos because that's the season that we're going into. But me personally, if the title resonates, that's what I'll watch because I'm whatever sign I feel like. Okay? <laughs> All right? Um, if time is an illusion, then like I said, you can go through any of the videos that I've put. If the title resonates, then I'm sure it's, it's relevant for now. All right, but anyway, moving on. Let's see, Aries. The chariot and the hermit. Some of you guys are coming out of reclusion. Some of you guys are coming out of your dark night more victorious than you've ever been. 
Some of you have been going in and out of this dark night of the soul type of energy and are coming out understanding why you had to be in this dark place for as long as you were. Some of you are feeling very victorious about what you overcame, got away from, survived. So you've transmuted the pain of whatever occurred here on this long journey, Dolo, and transmuted it into power, which is now propelling you forward into your new timeline. This is Virgo energy. This is Cancerian energy. But either way, the chariot as your overall moving into 2020, fantastic. Fantastic. All right, now let's break down this chariot energy and this hermit. I'll take both, why not? And let's really see what's going on for my beautiful Aries. Justice and the hermit again. A lot of you balanced out your karma alone. A lot of you were pulled into sacred space so that you could balance out your karma safely and independently and alone. Some of you, your karma was to go through certain trials and tribulations feeling alone, whether you were actually alone or not. It was part of karmic debt. There was something you needed to learn and bear alone without offsetting or kind of pushing on to other people. So some of you bared your cross. Whatever that cross was, you bared it alone. And you're coming out of reclusion, introspection, dark night, very victorious. Hmm. Karma is the theme this month. Karma is playing out in the craziest ways. Some people, it's... It's, it, I, I, it's just, it's, it's so profound. It's like zero or a hundred. It's like, it, it, there's nothing in between. It's just very, um, for some people, zero to a hundred is playing out in people's lives. Like it's just where there's, ugh, I, I, it's just a lot, Aries. It's a lot. You guys are the last sign I'm doing. So it's like part of the last, like sometimes the last sign will just like accumulate like everything in all of the energies. Anyway kind of rambling on but let's see you guys know I like a clean shuffle because that means the energies are clear yeah we have a clear line of communication yeah it's beautiful all right beautiful Aries let's see what's going down I told you guys victory some of you guys are moving forward directly to the ten of pentacles some of you ah uh, for some of you the matriarch and patriarch are, of a family are finally on the same page for some of you there was a matriarch and a patriarch that were at odds that were causing a lot of discord and segregation within a family. People were picking sides. People were, it was very low vibrational. And it was because the leaders of this bloodline and this family were at odds. And for some of you, there's been reconciliation with the matriarch and patriarch of your family, whether you're the matriarch or patriarch, your parents, possibly grandparents, who knows? But it looks like these the, the, the heads of a family are finally on the same accord, which is trickling down to the other family members and it's bringing in reconciliation with regards to family and bloodlines. Bloodlines that have been estranged and fragmented are coming together because the leaders and the elders of the family are resolving their differences, balancing out their karma, and it's trickling down. That's for some of you. All right, first card out, the five of wands. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing like some really serious, some really long-standing karma with regards to family. Like I'm getting a family group that everybody feels really alone because there's so much segregation. It's like these people, like these cousins don't talk to these people and these people can't talk to them. And if they do, then these parents, it's, it's very, 
like a mess. And it was almost like the only way this was going to come together was if the actual adults, because I am getting that this has negatively impacted the children. So like the younger cousins, siblings, they are not coming together the way they should because the elders and the parents are not coming together. They're actually putting pressure on the younger generations to pick sides in arguments or family feuds. And essentially, there are certain family members that I think drew a line saying, I'm not going to pick, I'm not picking sides. And it actually got the elders, like, like I said, the patriarch and the matriarch have gotten on the same page and understanding that they were not leading their family in the right way. Next card, the hangman. The next card, the ace of wands. Wow. Next card, the eight of pentacles. Next card out, the seven of pentacles. Next card out, the three of wands. So we've got the six of wands and we've got the four of wands the five of wands plus the ace and then the three of wands plus the ace four of wands and six of wands also equals the ten of wands which is the releasing of a burden which is probably what will get some of you out of this hanged man energy some of you want to embark towards something but you some of you are holding back you want to embark in something with somebody the problem is is you are not communicating some of the conflict that you're having about embarking in something. So somebody is hesitant, but they're not communicating to somebody why they're hesitant. You need to be very careful because there's this energy. If you're not the chariot energy and this chariot energy is coming towards you offering this ace of wands energy and you slack on it, meaning you are having this energy, you're not communicating where you might be indifferent, hesitant, or in conflict about moving forward, this person will move forward without you. Because essentially they're in this energy, like they're ready to go. And for some of you on their journey or before they're leaving and embarking in their chariot and moving forward, they're coming to you with an ace of wands. But some of you are not communicating where your hesitation is. Some of you are, are hesitant about committing to someone or something some of you are hesitant about committing to something because of the workload. You're afraid that you can't manage the workload of something that you're moving forward to or something that you want. This three of wands, this exploration, progress, opportunity, and then this long-term investments and results. Some of you are trying to determine whether this passionate new beginning that is being presented to you actually has long-term potential because back back in history for Aries, when this Ace of Wands energy would come in, you would embark in the opportunity. The problem is, is you embarked in the Ace of Wands opportunity with the idea that it had long-term potential and a lot of the time it didn't. So I feel like for a lot of my Aries, this hangman energy is smart, especially with regards to embarking in passionate new beginnings in particular, passionate new beginnings, because essentially you want to embark in passionate new beginnings, but you don't want the passion to be the only thing that's there. So there's a sense of wanting to embark in something, but wanting to see what could come of it in longer term, like down the road. And that's where some of my Aries are hold, holding back, because I think for some of you, you've been on this journey independently. This Ace of Wands comes in off the back of, you know, it's divinely guided with the temperance under it. So the divine is bringing in an opportunity. It's almost like somebody's picking you up saying, hey, you want to ride? You want to come with me? And there's a part of you that's excited about it and a part of you that's kind of relieved. But then another part of you realizes that you need to maybe take a second to really think about this because you have long-term goals now. And these long-term goals, you need to communicate, talk to, and get on the same page with this person or else wherever this Ace of Wands is going, you're going to end up getting somewhere going, how the fuck did I get here? So instead of doing that, some of you guys are saying, no, before I embark in this Ace of Wands, I want to discuss about the long-term potentials about moving forward 
where this could possibly go. What are the goals? Like it's, 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 it's longer vision and it's part of the journey you've come from. You learned to value long-term investments and visions and be patient because of this long journey that you've done solo. So now the flashy lights of the Ace of Wands doesn't get your buy-in right away. Some of you guys are, are saying, I'll embark in this, but I need to know more about this. There's a lot of passion and excitement, but I need to know practically about money, time, resources, how this is going to work out. What is required of me? What do you want from me? And then communications about what your expectations are about long term or even discussing maybe there is no long term. Some of you guys are embarking in passionate new beginnings and it's just you manifested something because you were bored or you were tired. Some of you haven't had sex or intimacy for a long time and manifested a new beginning that only has that doesn't have any longevity because you weren't manifesting that. Some of you are realizing that you weren't manifesting long-term relationships. You were only manifesting the ace of wands, which was that passion, that lust, and that new beginning type of feel. And then once that luster kind of disintegrated, you were back on your journey alone looking for the next ace of wands. Once, once this one burnt out, you were on a journey for another ace. But it was the wands. It was the passion, right? Some of you are realizing now that you want something more than just passion. You want stability. You want to move forward towards stability. Some of you, your lives very simply are going to pick up a lot of speed. Going from the hermit, so that's on foot, to in a chariot, things are about to speed up big time for a lot of Aries. Things are going to pick up. Things are going to start shifting and moving. Because essentially, whether you are aware of it or not, you are in a new vehicle. So if things start picking up, it's because you're in the chariot, you're not on foot anymore. Some of you are going to be purchasing a car, which is really cool. Some of you are going to ask somebody to help you purchase a car. And I don't think you're going to get that help to do it. And I think you might be really upset that somebody isn't going to help you purchase something like a vehicle or buy a trip for you. Some of you, it's, it's somebody isn't paying for your fair airfare somewhere or somebody isn't going to buy you a car. For some of you, this is somebody not fixing a car that they destroyed. For some of you, somebody crashed or damaged your vehicle and you're realizing that they're not going to pay to do it. So essentially, there is some conflict. Some of you aren't communicating to somebody that you're pissed that they haven't fixed something that they broke that they didn't pay you back, something of this nature, that they didn't fix something. Hmm. But yeah, I see energy is really picking up for Aries. This Ace of Wands energy, it's picking up, it's fiery, it's, it's, it's good. Um, for some of you, this is investing in a passionate new beginning that you've already embarked into. So some of you might have started a new friendship or relationship and you're realizing that there is long-term potential here. So some of you guys are getting maybe a little bit um, commitment phobic, phobic because you're more comfortable with the Ace of Wands energy, but now the nature of the relationship is moving more into the long-term investments and you guys are kind of just hanging in there, having to look at this differently because maybe you haven't looked to commit yourself to a relationship or a partnership ever or for a very long time. But because of what you've experienced with this person or in this relationship, you are getting, you are looking at it differently, saying there's long-term potential here. Like I could do something with this person. Like this is worth investing time in, you know, um, kind of thing. For some of you, you're going to be moving in with this passionate new beginning, like coming in, meaning moving in together, um, doing something, taking it to another level in springtime. Yeah, for some of you, you're dating someone and you have no idea that by spring, it's going to be very serious. You're going to go from embarking in this new beginning from a hermit mode perspective on foot, tantalized by the fire and the passion. All of a sudden, you're no longer hanging in that energy and suspensed in that. You're now moving forward very quickly into long-term investments. Like, it's, it's almost contradictory because like, this energy and this energy are very similar. The hermit energy is more 
slower, long-term, more aerial view, better understanding, longer vision, right? This is by foot, it moves slower. This Ace of Wands, very passionate, fiery, the, the chariot, very quick moving, like, but it's coming like this. So some of you are, yeah, like I said, this passionate new beginning turns into something that you move forward. It's almost like you get to somewhere with a, a, a relationship and you're like, holy fuck, how did we end up here? Living together, fucking investing in property together. Like some of you are going to, some of you are dating somebody and going to invest in a home with them. That is going to, that is really committing to a long-term vision with this person, right? Yeah, I see things really picking up for you guys. Big time, big time, big time. Death, transformation. Knight of Cups and the Page of Wands. Yeah, for some of you, there's there this energy here is very loud. Ironically enough, the mouth is closed, but it's very loud. I'm hearing this person going, oh, there's a lot this person wants to say, but is trying to avoid conflict. Some of you want to embark in a new opportunity and you are not talking about the red flags. You are not talking about the hesitations. You're not allowing your shadow to communicate to you where the issues are, where it's seeing darkness. And some of you are not communicating where you see darkness in someone or where you see something might not work out or where you're lacking, where you see there's an issue with the long term. Some of you are holding back communicating something because you do not want somebody to not to change their mind about exploring something with you. Or you don't want someone to look at your availability differently if you communicate. So it's almost like if I communicate that I see red flags about something, this person's going to assume that I don't want to embark with them. So it's going to get this person to not say anything. That's a problem. Some of you are experiencing and seeing red flags in a passionate new beginning. And in order to further explore it um, for the long term, there's going to be a need to let go and communicate honestly how you guys are feeling. Some of you are in relationships and looking inwards at yourself and realizing that you want to move forward or have a vision for moving forward and are in conflict with somebody about it, but you're not saying. So some of you are sacrificing your own forward movement because of what you are choosing not to communicate out of fear of somebody not wanting to come with you. Somebody is holding back something to avoid conflict. Somebody is holding back information in order to get you to not stop sleeping with them. So some of you are, 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 are sexually engaged with somebody, okay? They want to further explore this, but they know that they feel, sorry, that if they say something or come up with some kind of truth that you'll be done with them. For some of you, this is communication that somebody you are sleeping with is actually choosing to move away from you. And, oh, that's what it is. For some of you, you are not communicating that you want more than this passionate new beginning. Some of you want commitment and forward movement to a more committed relationship, the Ten of Pentacles. Part of you subconsciously isn't communicating this because you know your person isn't available to do it. The problem is, is what's going to be revealed to you is why they're not available to do it. And essentially they're exploring another opportunity that they see more potential for long term. Or this could be vice versa, Aries. This could be you not feeling, feeling hesitant to not feeling conflicted about communicating to somebody that you want to explore a long term relationship or explore an opportunity elsewhere outside of them. The problem is, is there's already been something initiated with these people. Right. So these the, the, for some of you that are newly dating, somebody isn't on the same page. For some of you, you're under you, you, you need to under you need to communicate what your needs are, because this this is sexual energy. It's passionate. It's fun. But some of you are not communicating that it's not enough and that you want to explore deeper. You want to commit deeper. You want to have you want to make 
long-term plans. There, there's somebody who doesn't make long-term plans with you and it could very well be because they are pursuing or exploring long-term plans with somebody else or that they are they are struggling to make that decision with you that they want to explore this with somebody else possibly. Yeah, there's a lot getting there. Um, no, that was it. Page of Wands, Knight of Cups, and the Death card. All right, we're going to go into clarification with the Lenormand. My beautiful Aries. Let me know if this makes sense, guys. Let me know how you guys feel about this reading. If it doesn't resonate, talk about the energies that you are dealing with, the downloads you are getting, because enough people read the comments. And I'm very sure, because if it doesn't resonate, there's nothing I can do about that. Don't come to me talking about, oh, it doesn't resonate, like as if I'm supposed to rebuttal that, because I will not. Okay, it's a stupid thing to say. It's like, it's like, okay, and what would you like me to do about that? It's like yelling, I've got to pee. Okay, well then go to the bathroom. Don't, no, and not everybody needs to help you with that. Right. So anyways, if you would like to share your own experiences, if this doesn't resonate or the energies you're subject to or your own downloads, I'm sure there's people within the collective that will, you know, resonate with you straight up. Because at this level, 2020, all the people here are high priests, high priestesses doing this thing called Ascension, man. So you get your own downloads. You know, a lot of you guys are, are drawn to me just for me as a person, even if the readings don't resonate. So talk about what you guys are dealing with. Anyways, let's see further what's going on here. Yeah, the revealing investments. Yeah, this is about uh, making an investment into long-term plans. Someone is going to take action surrounding their new foundation and the goals, the long-term goals they have. The problem is, is it's I'm seeing a bunch of things. Somebody's coming to this realization. So some of you are realizing that these goals that you're making don't include somebody, but there's somebody that you are sexually engaged with, have started something with. It's like, it's it's going to be hard to communicate to somebody that they aren't a part of this long-term vision, right? For some of you, it's going to be hard for you to hear because you're going to look at this person and be like, why are you fucking me when I told you I want to explore you know, a real committed relationship. And this person is essentially saying, that's not what I want to explore with you. It's probably because they've decided to do that with somebody else. And for some of you, this person that you've started a new beginning with, they are reconciling with somebody that they did end something with. So they weren't lying. The problem is, is, is that they were looking, it was almost like a rebound energy. They were looking for passion and excitement because they lacked it going through a tough karmic cycle with their current partner. And then they end up ending that relationship, engaging you, but essentially they're conflicted because how do they communicate to you that they are still invested or that they are going back to something that they've put a lot of time into? For some of you, it's a seven-year relationship that you are going to go back to and then have to communicate with somebody you've been engaging with that they are that you can no longer engage with them because you're committing to a different path. So I see some tough conversations because that can get nasty. Someone's going to feel a way about that. Yeah, tough conversation. Somebody's going to feel a way about the truths that are communicated. Um, burnt bridge. Yeah, somebody, somebody, somebody knows that if they communicate a truth that it's going to burn a bridge that they are not ready to burn necessarily. So for some of you, um, somebody's pulled back, they're not communicating and it's because they're trying not to burn a bridge, but they feel like karmically they need to tell the truth. And they absolutely do, okay? Because if they, if you want long term, if you have, if you, if you're seeking only passion, and the person you're dealing with is looking for long term commitment, and they've communicated that to you, and you continue to engage them under the under false pretenses, you're bringing really bad karma to yourself. And in this year, the year of karma, Granddaddy Karma, I, I, I would not advise <laughs> these kind of games, guys. It's gonna nip you real hard and fucking fast. Meaning they're, you're going to feel that. If you did not hear God when he told you not to do it, he is going to make you feel him. <laughs> and uh, I feel no one, fear no one but my creator, but I fear him. Like anytime he spanked me, it's hurt. <laughs> anytime he spanked my bum, it has hurt me. <laughs> um, oh, nice. Oh, that's cool. Some of you, some of you... Ooh. 
Okay. Yeah. Some of you need to be very careful about engaging relationships in the workplace outside of the workplace. So making really close friends with people in your workplace, because I feel like this either occurred or will. There was some kind of discussion that was a betrayal of you, which essentially burnt a bridge in a social dynamic. Like it's like I, this is the work card and this is like the courtyard, the park. So this is like socializing surface level conversations in the workplace. But it's almost like it's almost like I'm seeing with the home, some of you inviting people from your workplace to chill with you in like close quarters like your home meet your friends. It's like really trying to buck up with work people. I would be very, very careful about that because essentially this person might regret, like this person might on accident say things that they shouldn't have said that you discussed. They reveal information that I think was privately discussed. And it for some of you, it's about it's about your work. So for some of you, you might have shared with somebody that you are trying to leave and like seek new opportunity. And then somebody kind of makes a comment that alludes to you not being interested in something. Or somebody says, oh, so-and-so won't be there. And you're like, what? Like, excuse me? And people are looking like, what? That kind of energy. And you might regret bringing somebody from the workplace that you felt like you were friends with in your close quarters. Keep it keep it super copacetic, platonic in the workplace. Go for coffee, chill, but be mindful of discussing things that are happening in your home, in your personal life with people in the workplace because I see that somehow it negatively impacts. It's like something that somebody was supposed to not say creates a conflict because they then said it and it's in the workplace. So it's 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 um mm, I don't like that. Yeah, and then you've got the, the bear, which is the card of authority. You know, this is like somebody talking to the wrong people. I don't know. It's weird. Some of you are going to be very intrigued. There's this masculine energy that is going to reveal a bunch of emotions to this feminine. This feminine is very intrigued, but there's this sense that this feminine is taking this authoritative approach. So this feminine energy is trying to pretend that she is not touched or moved by the emotions that are expressed by this masculine, but essentially she's trying to maintain a strong front, an authoritative front, one that's in control, leading, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, for some of you, for some of you, this is, yeah, for some of you, this is somebody communicating to you because it's playing out for different ways. Because for some of you, these are really soft sentiments. These emotions from this masculine are going to really challenge your, your hard front and your persona because it's soft and it's tender, okay? But for others of you, this masculine is communicating that he went back to a relationship, as you can see, those hung people. You were under the impression that it was over, but essentially this masculine has returned and given his heart back to this person and is revealing that to you. And essentially he's the bear and you're kind of, he's under, he's under fire. You're, you're like, what the fuck? I thought this, 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 and that. We've been sleeping together. We've been having conversations possibly about the future. Now all of a sudden this person's pulling back and essentially it's because they've gone back somewhere. For others of you, though, this is, for others on the flip side, this masculine is communicating that, like, this is over. And this might not have anything to do with you. This masculine might not have cheated on you. It might have just been his new availability. Either way, this masculine has either is either going back to a relationship that has been dead and gone and is going to communicate this to somebody else. Or this masculine has ended a relationship and has now made his heart available to offer it to Aries and communicate all these underlying feelings that I think you might have intuitively felt but didn't have any verification. Well, for some of you, this masculine is going to verify exactly what intuitively you were feeling. So you're quite intrigued, but again, I'm getting this impression of like trying to stay hard and like trying to like 
not look like you are touched or phased by this heart and these emotions. Whatever, Aries, I see right through you. <laughs> I see you lighting up like a Christmas tree, but trying to act real hard like... Mm. I'm like, please. <laughs> you don't want you don't want I don't you don't want me around if this masculine comes. I'll be like, she's she's fronting. She is fronting. She is fucking crying inside. She is very happy. Like <laughs> I'm not a good friend for that. I'll call out the bullshit. Anyways. It could play out differently. Yeah, because for some of you, that's what this tower moment is, is being told that somebody is going back. Some of you are embarking on, some of you are deciding I am going to be single. I need time to be alone. I'm no longer engaging these, deciding like this Ace of Wands energy lit this all on fire. So essentially you're realizing how these passionate new beginnings can turn into forest fires, how a small little fire can spread and cause a lot of destruction. So this is where you're getting an understanding of what captivates you and draws you into new relationships and partnerships. Yeah, some of you are, when you, like, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it so many ways. But anyways, let's pull from this fairy godmother oracle. Healing. Some of you are going to be healing from some victimhood. That means that the healing needs to occur to transmute pain into power or else victimhood. Victimhood stops you from transmuting pain into power because a lot of the time people will invest in the power that they get from playing the victim, okay? For some of you, this person played the victim and is essentially like, that's why you need to be really careful about people who talk shit about their past partners. That's always a red flag to me because I don't talk shit about my, my exes. I talk about the shit I've gone through with exes, but I don't talk shit about them. Okay. And it's same with employers. If you go into an interview talking shit about the place you just came from, the employer is going to look at you and say, okay, well, when we depart, you're going to be talking shit about us too. We don't like that. So there's a, some of you, um, some of you are reflecting, realizing the red flags that you ignored realizing that this person was speaking too much about a relationship that was supposedly over. So that should have been a red flag that there was still some kind of tie, tether, or interest there. Because essentially when they go back, you're reflecting on that saying, oh, now I get it. I knew that wasn't right. I knew that it was strange that he was venting to me like this, or she was talking about him like this, or whatever the case is. Some of you are going to leave somebody that you've been dating because they talk too much about a, a past partner only for you to leave them and find out they get back together with that partner. You dodged a bullet. Perception. Yeah, some of you are getting a different perception, realizing like on a different perception on the victimhood thing. So for those that are living in this victimhood, a lot of the time, why we won't come out of the victimhood is because we are afraid of feeling shame. So if we're not the victim, then we have to be beating up ourselves and ashamed, right? No, it, there's a perception thing here. There's healing that needs to occur because someone's perception is off. Someone's pain is muddling their perception on a situation, a relationship, whether it's occurred in the past or, or present. There's this victimhood and this shame that somebody is needing to come out of. Some of you can't embark in your new opportunities because you're walking through feeling victimized and shameful about your past experiences, that it's, it's blocking your vision about moving forward all right, fickleness. Mm, I'm not going to go there. Let's um, wrap with a oracle. My beautiful, happy New Year's, guys, okay? There's so much happening. Like in all these readings, there's so much occurring, guys, all right? I'll keep that out. I just want one. This one? Yeah. Um, 
there's just so much happening, guys. There's no way. I know that there's a lot of you that this won't resonate with. And I, I feel your messages. Like I can feel the messages that I didn't touch on, you know, of the people the check other videos, even of other readers that you really like, don't get caught up on the signs. If you resonate with a reader and you're watching her and her energy matches, that means that there's readings. They just might not be the month or the, the sign, right? So, so really let your high priests and high priestesses lead you to where you can gain the information that you need to essentially validate your own intuition. Because eventually you'll stop watching tarot because you don't need that validation because you your relationship with the divine has proven to you that what you feel and download is true to you. You don't need anybody, not even a reader, to co-sign it. All right? The vessel. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a woman. We are definitely the vessels. Mm -hmm. L-X-I-X. The vessel, the body, the container, and the cup. The vessel may be the most powerful archetype form on earth. It is everywhere. Cups hold liquid, stoves hold fire, and our bodies hold organs. Our homes hold families. Through the simple act of separation, the vessel protects what it contains. Nests protect the eggs. Saving accounts protect our earnings. Even the planets are contained within their circular orbit. When this card appears, it's time to access, assess, what is being held together and how? Is the vessel too tight, too loose, broken, empty, full, or perhaps there is no vessel at all and the contents spill in every direction? It is, a na it is natural for structures to be formed and eventually fall, fall apart. The vessel has a life cycle that must be honored. It is time for you to build, break, or repair. You must find out. When light, stable, strong, graceful. When dark, trapped, being in a bubble. And go deeper. Loving cup by the rolling stones. The mentor and the healer must pay particular attention to this archetypal form. Healing cannot be sustained without a strong container. The physical body is the most sacred vessel of all. It is the one of which you reside from your first breath to your last. It may need your attention. As you can see, I'm in my workout gear because I'm having to work out. Like, I'm a very athletic person. I'm, like, like gifted genetically, but I can't, like, like on my dad's side, I come from the gene where they, keep, they get down on the floor and we do, like, 10 push-ups and we're ripped. So, like, <laughs> I'm genetically, and my mom's a serious athlete, right? So I'm genetically very gifted, but I can't not take care of my body workout because I'm relying on my good genes, Right, so there's this need to take care of your vessel. Um, for some of you, that vessel is your love, your cup of love, your understanding. Anyways, I really like the vessel card for this reading. Um, either way, guys, you you like, share, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. I know you guys will. Aries is very vocal. Um, but until the next time I see you guys, please continue to let your inner angels live. Happy 2020. All right, and congratulations for making it here. Whatever happens in 2020, up until this point. You guys did that. Congratulations. And I love you all dearly. Mwah. Ciao. <laughs>